Hello and welcome to this quick screencast where we're going to deal with one question. Why is the most general antiderivative of 1 over x equal to natural log absolute value of x and not just natural log of x? First of all, I'm not going to be writing the plus c on the any on the end of any of these antiderivatives. We all know that uh, if I find one antiderivative, the most general antiderivative will be that function plus an undetermined constant. These are all going to have it, so let's just not write the plus c. It's understood for us. So for previous work, we already know that natural log of x is an antiderivative for 1 over x, because if I take the derivative of log x, I get 1 over x. This means that natural log of x is an antiderivative for this. So there's really two questions we have to answer. First of all, uh, is it true that the derivative of natural log absolute value of x also equals 1 over x? Is this true? And if it is, and we will show that it is, um, why should we prefer this function with the absolute values over natural log of just plain old x as an antiderivative for 1 over x? Let's clear the board and work with each of these things individually. First of all, we have to know a little bit about absolute value of x. So this function, we know, uh, is really a piecewise function. Okay? How do we calculate the absolute value of x? Well, if uh, x is bigger than or equal to zero, nothing happens. The absolute value of x is just itself. Uh, if x is less than zero, on the other hand, uh, the absolute value of x is the opposite of x. Uh, this isn't a negative number necessarily. In fact, if x is negative, then negative x is actually a positive number. Now, if you accept that definition for the absolute value, then we can actually take its derivative. So the derivative of absolute value of x we'd uh, take its derivative in pieces as well. So if x is positive, if x is positive, the derivative is just going to be the derivative of x, which is 1. And if x is negative, x is negative, then the derivative is just going to be minus 1, the derivative of negative x. And we know that if x is equal to 0, there's no derivative at all there. Okay, so that's the derivative of absolute value of x. And that's important because we're now going to go and look at the derivative of natural log of absolute value of x. Now this being uh, natural log of absolute value of x, it means that this is a composite function with, the, with the, an inside function u equal to, to um, absolute value of x and an outside function y equal to natural log of u. So if I'm going to take the derivative of this thing, it's a chain rule situation. So I'm going to take the derivative of the outside, which will be 1 over u, and then put in the original inside, which is absolute value of x. And then I would have to multiply by the derivative of the absolute value of x. OK, so that's what the chain rule would say. Now, we can make this a little bit simpler by looking at the uh, definition of absolute value of x and its derivative. And the thing that we realize here is that what the outcome of all this is going to be depends on what x is. So let's take a look at each one. Now, if x is positive, what happens? Well, if x is positive, then this thing is just 1 over x. And this thing, the derivative, is just 1. That's, we get that from uh, just knowing how absolute value works. We see that up here. And we already determined that the derivative of absolute value of x is 1 if x is positive. Now, if x is uh, negative, let's see what we get. Then this thing here would be 1 over, and I, the uh, absolute value of that would be minus x. And we get that from right here, the second line. And the uh, derivative of that thing is minus 1. And if x is equal to 0, then this uh, derivative right here fails to exist. Now, in either case, what you notice here is I get 1 over x if x is positive, And because I have two negative signs here and I'm multiplying, I get 1 over x when x is negative as well. So whichever uh, way I go, I have 1 over x as long as x is not equal to 0 in the first place. Okay, So that proves is that one uh, that natural log absolute value of x, let me go and grab a little red pen here, the natural log absolute value of x is actually an antiderivative for 1 over x. So natural log absolute value of x and natural log of x have the same derivative, namely this. So this is an antiderivative as well. Why would we prefer it? Well, look at the domains of these functions, and that will be the answer to our question. The domain of this function uh, is the set of all positive numbers, 0 to infinity. We cannot put anything positive or anything negative or 0 into this. The uh, domain of this thing, however, is a lot bigger. It's actually, in some senses, twice as large. Uh, I can put, 
anything positive into this for sure, because that would just make it log of x. But I can also put in any negative number now, because I have an absolute value sign inside to filter out negative numbers. Um, but I can't put in 0, because that would still be a domain issue. So we prefer natural log absolute value of x as sort of the antiderivative, the preferred antiderivative for 1 over x, because it has the same derivative as log x, but it has a much, much larger domain. And so that's why we're going to say from now on that the most general antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log absolute value of x plus c.